Sunshine Valley Farm family, welcome back to another episode of the farm. If you're new here, you are most welcome. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and also turn your notification bells not to miss out on any episodes of the farm. And of course, to all our returning subscribers, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being part of the family and also loving Valley Farm. Well, today we are back at the farm. It's a very sunny morning after the rains. It's a rainy season, but we're so happy that today at least we got some sunshine. We need the sun, we need the rains as well. But I'm really so happy to be here. I'm really so happy to be giving you guys updates of what is actually happening at the farm. Have my co-director on standby who's going to say hello to you guys and also say something you're welcome well hello everybody my name is co-director grafton and today i'm so happy and pleased to be back on the grounds of value farm and i'm in an especially great mood today because yes indeed the rains have returned <laughs> and with the rains returning signs of life is coming back all over the farm but it also presents a unique challenge for the goats that we have on the premises you know, for those of you that are new to goat farming, this is the time for you to make sure you deworm all of your goats as the rainy season is starting. Make sure you're up to date on all of your vaccination, right? Yeah. And when it comes to that stuff, you do not want to compromise. Yes, the money might not be always readily available, but you should always plan for this time. Because at the end of the day, the prevention is always better That's than chasing the cure. <laughs> <laughs> What else? That is so true. Well, so many guys have really reached out to us and you know, they've been asking more about the goat farming, about the sheep as well. I know we've really taken so long without showing you guys the progress of the dopers, but the dopers have really adapted to the environment. They're really doing well so far. And of course, what we discovered, they love the dry season. Yeah, better. Like when it's dry, it's much better for them. They're out there, they're okay. But when it's a bit dry, I mean wet, they're not really in their best version, but they're okay and they're really adapted here. And of course, there were really some few questions that most of you really raised about raising the goats. Guys, I, I know, like, I'm standing here baking, but believe me, yeah. it's hot, but I love it. So does your goats. Mm. But let me also make sure that you guys understand this, right? We're standing in this section here. And of course, as you can see behind us, these are our crosses, okay? So I wanted to make sure I cover this topic really, really well with you guys, okay? When it comes to goat farming, I know many of you do watch these videos and some of you are getting intimidated. You're giving yourself the permission to buy into excuses about why you have not yet started farming. We're currently now in April, in March. April is around the corner and a lot of you your new year resolution was to get into farming, particularly goat farming or just farming in general. As human beings, we always look to find reason for us not to progress, not to move forward. And psychologically, we program that way, right? We always want to just remain comfortable. Well, let me give you guys the real good news here. In life, the moment you start to get comfortable, you're not progressing, you're falling behind. You know, the moment you start to look around, you have the car, you have the house, you have the wife, you have the kids, the white picket friends, that's an American reference, but those of you should understand that. Then you start to get fat and comfortable, lazy, you know, not trying to take any shot because look at me after all, right? <laughs> the point is, when we get comfortable, that's when you start to fall behind. And in the game of farming, in the game of business, in the game of, you know, the competitive nature of our, in, of our industry, you can never relax. So why am I telling you this, right? Yes, we know money is scarce for everyone, for most people. And not everybody has the budget to start out right away with buying these exotic goats, especially the pure ones, right? And that's the reason why you actually have the goats behind us. These moving their goats will cross. Yeah. Some of them are now second 
even third generation. In fact, the ones that are in here are third generation mostly, right? And in the beginning, you know, if you have yourself 400,000 shillings or 300,000 shillings, you can start with your goat. You don't have to start with 50. You don't have to start with 30 because after all, we only started with three, right? So if three can multiply to this number here, as they produce, we slowly add it. When the money come, I don't. We don't go out buy fancy shoes, buy fancy cars. Mm -hmm. We invest into our <laughs> farm. farm. And so you can start the same way, because let's face it, in the country that we're in right now, right? You guys know how difficult it is to make money, and you know inflation is killing all of us. But you know the best tool against inflation those goats behind us right there because let me tell you something price of food outpaced the rate of inflation so what do i mean by that the same amount of money you used to pay for one kg of goat meat last year right now it's about three to four thousand shillings higher and as we get closer to 2024 it's going to approach to being either five to seven percent higher than average right so we always tell you guys and i say this from the bottom of my heart the longer you wait to get started the more expensive it's gonna be yeah. buying these ghosts is just like buying land they have one similarity when it comes to paying rent you ask yourself this guys when was the last time your landlord knocked on your door and say you know what you've been a good tenant you've been with me for the past three years let me bring your rent down by three hundred dollars oh or buy 500,000 shillings. Has that ever happened? No. Whenever they knock on your door, it's to have that dreaded conversation. <laughs> you know, <laughs> prices That's have gone crazy. up. The rent has to go up. You understand? And it's the same thing with these goats here. The price don't go down. Just think about that. You might want to wait till you have 10 million, and in reality, you have 2 million right now. You should start right away because the time you wait to get your 10 million, the price might go up by extra 2%, 3%, and you're always gonna find yourself chasing the ball and you're never gonna catch up. That you is so true. Remember how we bought the first goat, the price of the first goat was it's not the same. Like 220. As, yeah. Yeah. Even we got some at around 200. 200, 180. Yes, 180, yeah. 160. Those days are gone. Yes. But even right you can't even get a local goat for 160 anymore <laughs> at this point. Exactly. Yeah. So even the local goats, the Movendo ones, you can get them 250, 350. So you can imagine in a few years to come. How well, much well, well now no that's when we were first starting right yeah. now to get a good movende female yes it's gonna start between 300 to 350 that is so true if you're getting good quality that is so true so if you wait like another year that number is probably gonna be around like 400 and believe me that 50k might not sound like much mm. but when you're trying to stock you're gonna feel it. You're going to really feel it. And of course, when you stock these goats at this time, then they might fly. Of course, your major thing is about management. As long as the management is key at your farm, your kids are really well protected so that you can fight the high mortality rates. Because that is one of the things that really kills so many beginner farmers. When you have your goats and they produce and the kids are not taken care of, especially in the beginning, in the first few weeks, most of them really suffer from diarrhea, you know, a few diseases that are unquote by the farmers sometimes if you have maybe some manager at the farm and even doesn't care to give them milk maybe extra milk and all that those are some of the things that you need to really put into place as the owner of the farm to make sure that at least you reduce all the mortality rates at your farm so that your goats can really multiply then i also wanted to make some few corrections about the previous video that we did about the zero grazing you know most people who are really saying you know that is so inhuman but most of you did not really watch the video till the end or did not listen to the details of this video so for those guys who really think if you're really doing zero grazing of course zero grazing is advisable for people or maybe if you have small pieces of land and you don't have enough space and you begin to dairy goat farming that is really more advisable for you to start but it's also advisable for you to have an exercising yard they get out the exercise it's not that they're only locked in the house so most of you came attacking us saying you know we are very inhuman we are not considerate if that lock us in the houses like that it would be nice but you didn't really watch the video to 
and got the details of it, but it's also really advisable for you, not only for the dairy goats, even the block, these other goats that you have, the boas, the savannas, the kalaharis. That's why you see they're out here. In the exercising year, they have to exercise before then they go out to the field to graze. So that is one of some of the practices that you need to really practice as a farmer so that you can make farming really enjoyable, especially with the goats and also the sheep. Now, that's a very good point. Now, you know what guys, it's been a while since we haven't really talked about this, but I always get emails about how folks are trying to transition, how they, they the number one comment we get both on TikTok, even Instagram um, direct messages, people always state the fact that we are living their dream. Well, guys, at some point, guess what? We were working in a corporate office too. Yeah. I was a. I always like to say I'm a reformed banker. Mm -hmm. You know, I I did okay in banking. Yes, I did really well in terms of a salary, but by the same token, I have never felt as fulfilled doing farming as I did when I was working as a banker. Mm -hmm. And I know there are many of you out there, not just in the diaspora, especially those of you who are working locally here in Uganda. Okay, I want to speak to you guys. Just because you've been stuck in your office job for the past 10 years doesn't mean there's no hope for you. Just because you are saddled with your kids and your bills and whatever debt that you may have, because I know many of you are not even living paycheck to paycheck, you're living two paychecks. You're having to piece literally two of your paychecks. Sometimes some of you are spending money from the paycheck you haven't even gotten yet from the following month just to try to make ends meet. Well, you know what? For those of you that are going through that, and the irony there, you guys have the number one thing you need to get started. Many of you are dying in Kampala. Many of you are hating what you're doing, whether it's in whatever big city you're working in, and yet you have the number one ingredient, and that's land. Many of you, you might not have individual land, but you have family land. Family land. So if you have family land, there's nothing wrong with you starting on your family land. And of course, you build your flock to the point where let your flock buy your land for you. That's like the best feeling. Guys, let me tell you guys this, right? We just brought in some additional goats from South Africa, and we want to continue to do so. Yeah. But a good portion of those goats were purchased by our pigs. <laughs> Just think about that, right? Our pigs are contributing to us buying goats the from goats South Africa. Well. Now, that's actually something I never would have imagined would be possible because when we started it with that one pig that we rescued, to now we have enough pigs that we've actually been growing that we can actually send out and yeah. expect to get money, right? But in your case, remember, I don't care if you can save 50,000 shillings a month, even the 25,000. By the time you get to a half a year, you will have enough money to at least get yourself one good Movende cross female, and your journey can start from, can there. Start from there. You understand? So don't wait for perfection, you know? There's a saying, you know, um, many of us, right, uh, we, we chase away good and the chase of perfection. Well, there's no such thing as perfection in life. No one's perfect, no process is gonna be perfect, no job will ever be perfect, no relationship will ever be perfect. But you can't throw something good just because you're chasing perfection. So in this case, you save your money. If you have your eucalyptus you've been growing, some of you are growing pine, you have forests on your, on your, on your farm, and the worst part is, there's so many of you I run into that tell me, ah, I think I have some land back in the village, <laughs> but you haven't been back there for 10 years. Yeah, true. You're ashamed to go back. It's been, you know, you don't want the local people to see you back in the village. Ah, this one couldn't make it in Kampala. Mm. Now he's coming back to the, the village. village but fighting. you know what? The villager you left, mm. when you went to Kampala, they are living way better than you, believe me, because they know how to grow their crops, they have at least a 10 to 15 goats there. Yeah. They're grazing, they have their cows, they're able to pay the kids tuition, and they're not living paycheck to paycheck. If it's good enough for them, 
with the knowledge and the wisdom you got from Kampala. Kampala from Imagine if you take the Kampala hustle back to the village. Who's gonna stop you? Mm. Apart from Nobody. you. Nobody. No one. No one at all. <laughs> I love the point whereby you say that we brought more goats here. This is a lesson to all farmers out there. You guys have really seen our journey. We started with a few goats, especially with the South African yeah, goats. Few. We've now brought, I think, four roots. Four times, yeah, yeah, they're like four times that we brought the goats here. These goats are not very cheap, mm -hmm. so if you're a farmer out there, do not get scared, like you know, because the goats are really too too expensive and all that. If you have your one goat, because as we bring these goats, we are not bringing them alone, we bring with other farmers. So, mm -hmm. yesterday when we were picking this goat, there were other farmers who were also picking their goats. So, in fact, there's a farmer who traveled all the way from Soroti to pick up his goats and the and the doper. And you know, with that, you, you could really see the happiness in this guy. <laughs> <laughs> the investment, you really see that, you know, he's really very happy. He's taking his real investment to Soroti. Yeah. yeah. You can't imagine. So you can take one, then you start from there. And we've learned from our gods. We've learned how they behave. Because when we brought the first bunch, of course, we were, you know, trying to know how they behave, how they're going to adapt, what food they, they like most, you know. So when we brought the second, second route, it was much easier. Now it is just... A walkover for us right yeah, now. Yeah, it's just a matter. It's like anything else. You got to learn to crawl before you can run, guys. <laughs> but let me just tell you this, right? When it comes to anything in farming, whether you start out by growing crops or you start out by livestock like we did, you're always, there's always going to be a learning curve. But let yeah. me just explain this to you guys. Please do not let fear get in the way. There's another saying back home. It's a saying, paralysis by analysis. What does that mean, right? Some people get paralyzed, trying to figure out all the answers, all the variables, and they find themselves just paralyzed by all the different choices and the different options. And in reality, sometimes you just have to start. Sometimes you just have to jump into the pool. It's no different. When the water's cold when you go to the ocean, you know, some people like to dip a toe in. It takes them two hours to get in the water. Some people never get in the water. Mm -hmm. But those of us who are brave enough, where you just look at your kids, they're just gonna make a mad dash for the water. Mm -hmm. They jump in, and less than a minute later, they've adapted to the temperature and they're having a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. And you, as the parent, you're just watching on the sideline. This is not the way you should approach business. There will always be an element of fear. There will always, there should always be in the back of your mind the possibility of failure. But even when you fail, guys, that's your opportunity to learn. You're going to make mistakes. And the only way you count failure is if you experience setback, challenges, and you decide not to get off the mat. That's when you fail. You know, as a former banker, I was explaining to my friend yesterday um, the, the concept of an unrealized loss in the stock market, right? And, and what it means, right? How you can buy stock in Tesla, for example, and you might have purchased it at like $500, and then it takes a nosedive, it goes down to like even $1. But in reality, until you actually accept loss, and you sell that stock, <laughs> that's when your loss becomes a reality. It is no different than farming. You know, you always have to diversify your approach. You know, even those of you who have no care for for pigs some of you have no care for cattle it's okay but when you come in you have to find what you love we happen to love goats sheep and the animals that we rear but some of you might be passionate about sheep some of you might be passionate about fish farming just make sure you diversify your approach i know there are a lot of model farmers out there those are people who just farm one particular animal or one particular crop we happen to believe in a different approach and since you're following us, right, you can look at us as your unofficial advisors, but we, we, you, we're part of your farming family. Sure. We hope you can at least learn from us that, hey, when you start, you can start with one, but have an open mind. You don't want to be rigid, you understand? Sure. And anybody's telling you, oh, you should only be growing cotton, or you should only be growing sunflower seed, nothing else. The, some mega farmers in the U.S. take that approach, mm. Keyword, mega farmer. Mm. <laughs> you know, these are people with over like 10,000 square. Um, I would say some of these guys have over like 10,000 acres plus, and they plant nothing but cotton seeds, right? Um, um, for cotton for the seeds to make oil. Some actually have canola, 
where they plant like 40,000 acres, right? But when it comes to you as you're getting started, mixed farming is a very safe way for you to get in, where you protect your front, mm -hmm. both sides and your flank, okay? So if you wanna do poultry, you wanna do sheep, and then you wanna plant something else to go with it, that's also a good option, okay? But keep an open mind. That is very true, because if you keep an open mind, and you're doing so many things at the same time, it will help you to learn what will work for you, what will not work for you as well. That's why we always tell you as a new farmer, as a beginner farmer, because we have received so many people who have, you want to, you know, to start, that's why we are dressing as new beginners. Yeah. So, there are people who say maybe goats in my area, they are not, it's not favorable, the climate is not favorable, the grass in my location is not favorable. But as long as you have it, then you have another sector somewhere there. You'll be able to learn and see, okay, I think this does much better. That's when you'll be able to even expand, you'll be able to stop more, you can be able to do much better in one sector. But if you started like maybe goats and things are not working out in your area and you find that, you know, they cannot adapt to the environment where they are and you lose everything thing and you don't have any other option it's going to be a big big challenge to you as a beginner farmer so mixed farming I think is a way to go even if you start small just do it so that you can learn from it and get even much better that's what we always advise you but I think for this platform you guys have really appreciated even from the previous video most people came to us and they were like you know I love the truth in hey. this video <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we give it to you straight with no chaser <laughs> <laughs> because most of you think, you know, we come here and just talk the nice things, but the last video, you on it. You really think about the bad, the, you know, the terrible things that we face, but we want to save all farmers out there. That's why we are here. We are not just here to, you know, for views or to just post that we have a farm, but also for people to learn from us so that you can get one or two things. And also you share with your friends and family. That's, that is the motive for, for this for these videos here but we really appreciate you guys so much but before we go mm. partner guys let me tell you something mm. I know I'm gonna date myself but it's okay mm. but there's a movie called sleeping with the enemy and let me just tell you something in your journey to becoming financially emotionally independent from the imaginary handcuffs that you put on yourself. A lot of us place limitation on ourselves. Mm. It's up here. And many times, you'll find out the people or the negative force, how the devil manifests itself in you, not reaching your full potential, it's not in your heart, but it's around the people you keep. It's the company you keep. Sure. Sometimes it's gonna be your teachers, Sometimes you'll find teachers that will help motivate you. I can tell you for myself, initially in school, I never thought I was that smart of a person early on in my time. But it was thanks to Mr. Merced that I had. He was actually my health and science teacher that actually pulled me aside. Because for me, I, would, I thought my only way out in life was to make it to the NFL. Because I just thought sports and athletics was my only way out. Okay. But that teacher mm -hmm. sat me down and actually he saw me. So he saw my potential. He saw my overall aptitude. He saw that I could offer more in the classroom, that I was giving the bare minimum effort. And it was Mr. Merced that actually got me to unlock my true potential. The same way that teacher actually helped me see the positive, there are many of you that have your relatives. Sometimes it's your brother, sometimes it's your uncle, sometimes it could be your own mom. Let me tell you guys, that will try to hold you back. They think they, they, they might be thinking they're doing you a favor by trying yeah. to protect you from losing your money. But in reality, they're gonna hold you back. And you as an individual, as long as God is on your side, and let me tell you something, if you're a farmer, God loves you. Just like God loves Value Farm. <laughs> Because if you're doing the work of the good Lord by feeding a nation, he has to be on your side. True. So, a lot of the time, you have to be wary of your friends. That might actually be very comfortable because they have a supporting spouse, they have the money saved, or they might have started out life a little financially more secure than you. And they're okay, and they don't want to see you progress beyond what they have. You have to be careful about the company you keep. Because at the end of the day, 
your kids, even your wife, in many cases, even your husband, that might be holding you back, when you push forward and you put your blinders on and you become successful, those are gonna be the same people that's gonna stand up and take credit for your work. That's gonna take credit for, ah, I'm the one that actually pushed them to go into farming when they had nothing to do with your success, right? So when it comes to this, as you watch this video, we hope you learn something from this experience, right? You block out the negativity, and you believe in your mission, you put forth your plan, and then you just go to work. Accept nothing but the best from yourself, and if you expect that for yourself, you will never let you down, unless you decide to lay down and quit. And in this environment, we don't accept quitters into the forming club. That is such a, wow, that is really amazing. I know sometimes you have to be selfish with yourself as well. You have to be. Because if you're to really rely on other people and their interests, you're going to lose out so much. Sometimes you go with what you want, what you see, what you think that, oh, this is going to help me, this is going to make me a better person. Because I remember when I was working at some of my friends, of course I lost some friends, a good number of friends because I didn't have me. But I don't care anymore, <laughs> like I'm so happy where I am. Because you know, when they see you as a farmer, they don't want to relate with you, they feel like, you know, how will they see me with the farmer? How will they see me with her? Who goes to the farm, who goes who hangs out with the goats, who hangs out with the pigs? <laughs> so some people try to run away from you. But you don't know what, you know, my, where my happiness is, you don't know. You don't know what really actually happens here. You've never been given me a chance to explain to you how it is, how profitable it is, or how you can benefit from what I'm doing as a farmer. So of course I lost so many friends, but I don't care about that right now. Of course we're making new friends. I've made so many farmer friends as well. Yeah. People I never ever expected to really be friends with. Mm -hmm. Like purity of Mashambani farms. Yeah. Richard, of you course. understand? You understand? Real friends. Real friends. Yeah. Business oriented. Yeah. Not for hanging out, not for going out to drink and you know, eat. Let me just <laughs> tell you, do not lose that train of thought. Guys, let me just tell you, in Google Farm Richard and mm. Purity, and I spent 15 years in the financial sector, okay. those are two of the smartest people I've ever had the pleasure in meeting mm -hmm. since I've been here in Uganda. Exactly. Please continue. I just have to give those guys credit. <laughs> So I was still telling you guys the type of friends that I'm now making. We are all doing farmers. We have forums that we are in. And you know people even respect you. Sometimes I look at myself, miss <laughs> as I am. <laughs> but I'm, making, I'm meeting these people. You know, respectable people. People reach out to me, you know, from big offices. And I sometimes I pinch myself and say, oh my God, is this really even happening? So the type of friends I'm making right now is really very good. And I'm not regretting making this choice, being a farmer. Same to you out there who really want to join the farming sector or maybe something else that you want to do, but you fear of how people will look at you, how people will say, what people will say about you, all that. So you didn't have to fear. Be selfish of yourself. See what you're going to benefit out of what you're going to do so that you can be a good person. But guys, that is just what we wanted to express to all people who fear joining the sector, joining farming, that do not fear. Just take the step, take the bold step, and you get into it. You see us here, we are enjoying, we are happy, we are not regretting. We have never at one point even said, I'm going back to an office. No, oh, I've not no. even had to talk about no. it. Like, you know, I'm going to, I think I should consider this job or whatever. No. We are happy, we are comfortable. And when you see someone who quit a, a corporate job ah. from America and coming here, <laughs> To doing farming and is very comfortable what does it say what does it say think about it and my biggest regret was not coming to do this 10 years prior you can imagine, yep. you can imagine. just go back sit at the corner of your house or somewhere think about yourself think about what you're doing currently so that you can make your mind but we really appreciate everyone who has been really watching these videos from you know even on social media not only on youtube but you guys even go to tiktok go to facebook go to instagram and you see whatever we are posting and you're really motivated and you're sharing this with your friends your families guys kudos to you guys we really appreciate you for doing the best for your family for the continent and for everyone of course but in case you haven't really checked
checked out our social media platform, please go check it out. We, because we have Value Farm on Instagram, Facebook is Value Farm as well, then TikTok is also Value Farm. Please go check behind the scenes and also let's keep the conversation down below in the comments because we want to hear you guys' opinion as well, your experiences, have you already started a farm, what have you done so far as a new farmer or an experienced farmer, what are your challenges, what are the good things that you've achieved, so that you can encourage anyone who is really watching this video because we are here to encourage other people as well to join the farming sector but really appreciate you guys so much till next time bye, bye.